Global capital moves across different markets as traders and fund managers actively participate even during the corona times wearing appropriate protection in different markets in different assets in different currencies using strategies like long straddle short butterfly etc in order to achieve the right balance between price movements especially those that are soaring very high and those that are crashing so that the fund can get outperformance from its peers against the benchmark in search of that alpha how do markets move who are these investors who trade in different assets in different currencies in different markets why do they trade in different assets in different currencies in different markets hello everybody and welcome to my youtube video on hedge funds i have already uploaded a video on hedge fund a global overview the link of which is shared below in the comment section in this video we are going to take a look at hedge fund structure let's analyze what are the different aspects of the hedge fund structure let's take a look first at what are hedge funds hedge funds are privately owned funds so what do i mean by privately owned funds if a fund is privately owned there is absolutely no public ownership that means all the regulations that are applicable to mutual funds are not applicable to hedge funds because mutual funds are publicly owned so wherever there is any public investment okay then there is a higher level of disclosures reportings regulations etc in the case of hedge funds since it's privately owned none of these are there the hedge fund manager is a entity who is employed by the hedge fund to trade in the different asset classes so because it's privately owned and it's privately managed hedge funds have a very secretive set of operations keeping in mind that there are private investors like high net worth individuals ultra high net worth individuals sometimes sports celebrities sometimes film star celebrities sometimes unicorn founders all act as investors because the investment made by these investors into the hedge fund runs into millions of dollars since all these aspects are private investors privately managed and privately owned the operations of the hedge fund are very secretive there is very little known about hedge fund operations outside of the circle of investors there is there are unlike mutual funds which have to report every day the navs at the end of the uh, working day hedge funds don't have to do any such regulatory reporting we now analyze what is the most commonly accepted structure in the united states for hedge funds this structure is called as the master feeder structure let's analyze what is a feeder fund a feeder fund is the one that pools the capital from different investors into the master fund the feeder fund feeds the master fund literally okay so the master funds collect capital from feeder funds and the master fund then invests in different financial assets in multiple currencies in different markets a feeder fund let's take an example of how a feeder fund collects money let's say there is jack who invests millions of dollars into a feeder fund then there is henry who invests his private wealth into a feeder fund then there is jill who also invests her money her wealth her inheritance into a feeder fund so the feeder funds pool the capital from different investors each of these investors could be contributing in multiples of millions of dollars into the feeder fund so the feeder fund actually is the end contact point of the in investor the investor will know details about the feeder fund and also the details about the master fund which is the investment arm of the feeder fund what happens once the feeder fund collects or pools this capital so it's very important to understand this concept of pooling pooling means your collective uh, aggregation of the capital so this 
collective aggregation of capital is collected by the feeder fund. What does the feeder fund do with it? The feeder fund feeds the master fund. So if over here we have feeder fund 1 which can invest in master fund. We have another feeder fund 2 which can invest in the same master fund. Like this there could be up to 7 or 8 different feeder funds okay, which can invest in the same master fund. Similarly, feeder fund 1 can invest not only in master fund, it can also invest in another master fund. There is no restriction or there is no limitation on the kind of money that is being invested by the feeder funds into the master fund nor is there any restriction about the number of funds that a single feeder fund can invest in. The master fund then invests in different financial assets, multiple currency, multiple assets, multi-country and trades in the securities market. What does a master fund do with all the money that it has collected from the different feeder funds? The master fund then invests all this. So now the master fund has also created a pool. So while the feeder fund has created a pool of money from individual investors or institutional investors, the master fund has pooled in the fund from different feeder funds and they then invest in uh, equities which are listed in different markets. They could also invest in convertible securities. Convertible securities are bonds or preference shares or warrants that could get converted into equity or exercise after a period of time. Master funds are also allowed to invest in bonds depending upon what is the fund objective and asset allocation policies. The master fund can invest in different assets in different currencies. So they can invest in USD, in Euro, in SGD, etc. They can also employ very high-end, very sophisticated derivative trading strategies in order to maximize return and minimize risk on the portfolio. So the master fund is actually the operating arm of the hedge fund because it employs the fund manager, it makes the investments, it has got technical analysts, it's got fundamental analysts, it employs quantitative research analysts so that the entire team then decides how to trade in different securities. The feeder funds therefore feed the master fund. The master fund then makes the investments in different assets, in different currencies, in different countries. So to sum up whatever we have discussed till now, the structure of the feeder funds is into feeding the master fund. The master fund is the investment arm the master fund then trades in different assets in different countries. Now what happens if the feeder fund 1 has contributed 100 million dollars into the master fund and feeder fund 2 has contributed 300 million dollars into the master fund and these are the only two feeder funds that have invested in the master fund. So taking the master fund counter pool there are there is 100 million from feeder fund 1, there is 300 million from feeder fund 2. Collectively, both of them together, the master fund now has 400 million dollars to invest in the markets. Now, keep in mind that if these are the only two funds at the end of the year, whatever profits are generated are distributed in the same proportion of their contribution. Okay. It is the same proportion of the contribution, one third and three, uh, one fourth and three fourth is a contribution over here. So 25% of the profits go to feeder fund one and 75% of the profits go to feeder fund two. That's a very simplistic structure as I told you. In another video, I will be explaining very clearly how profits are paid by the master fund to the feeder fund. It's very important to first start off with the basics. Let's get an understanding of the master feeder structure and then we'll move on to other topics in the fund accounting industry. The main benefits of the master feeder structure is that there is a reduction of trading costs. The master fund, because it's collecting money, it's trading in large volumes, it achieves economies of scale. Also from the US taxation perspective, this appears to be the most appropriate 
uh, structure that has been adopted by many of the uh, hedge funds operating from the United States. If you like the content in this video, I request you to please click, share, subscribe. Please leave your comments. I also am posting quick bites or shorts, uh, YouTube shorts for checking your fund accounting knowledge. Thank you very much. This is your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan, signing off.